Hey everybody, I'm Cyrus Ragnos. I'm going to be showing you a little bit more with the CryEngine Sandbox today, and today we're also going to be working with a program called World Machine. Now, I showed you how to create just a standard map in the last episode, in the very first episode on how to create just, you know, a very basic map and very basic terrain. But if you want to go with something a little bit more advanced on creating a more realistic looking terrain, which is more of like a world setting, there's a very, very good program called World Machine. I would definitely recommend going and getting it. Just look up online on Google, just type in World Machine, you can find the free trial, or you can pay for it. Now, first things first when you come into the world machine is just start start it up for one and once you get it up it's gonna come up with these three basic um, you've got ter terrain creation filters and output settings now you can grab the grab grab it's not working <laughs> okay <laughs> I don't know why it's not working and usually you can just grab the top of that there it is there it goes so we're just going to grab the tops of these and we're just going to make it so that, you know, we got ourselves a nice looking graph here. And if you go like just the standard, you can see up here, this is the standard type of terrain creation, but there's so much that you can do with this guy. Now I am going off of the CryEngine documents manual for how to show you up this the uh, this new guy so first of all we need to go under world commands and then project world parameters so I believe world commands are here and then project world parameters now once this guy's up now it says that CryEngine only supports the standard power resolution which is at two resolution sizes uh, which are 256, 512, 1024, 248 and 4096 so as you can see our resolution is 513 by 513 well CryEngine only works with 512 so what's wrong is you have to uncheck this plus one now we're at 512 by 512 and that's what we're looking for is that 512 512 resolution that CryEngine will support so now now we're, we're basically done with that portion so you just click OK and now we need to get our height output correct and set so I'm just gonna you know make these a little bit more decent in the straight line here so height output double click on that guy now CryEngine only will support four different file types that you can export from the world machine one is a low precision 8-bit bitmap I'm sorry and three high, higher precision 16-bit images raw 16 PGM and TIFF files now they all always always use as a standard for CryEngine the 16-bit variations, not the 8-bit, because they give you a higher, better terrain quality than the 8-bit bitmap, which suffers from a lot of terracing apparently. So what you want to do is go with RAW 16. That's the basic file type that they utilize, and you just click right output to disk. The world must be built before you export your crane terrain. Would you like to do so? Go ahead and click yes. File output 16, written successfully. Now that goes into your default world machine folder. And so you just click OK and you're done with the height output. Now we have to add a couple more nodes. These will allow us to save the file, color the color map, and preview the data in world machine before we export it. So what we need to do is add the bitmap output which is under devices output bitmap output so we go up here to devices outputs bitmap output now as you can see we can place it wherever we want and where we want to put it is out here in output so we click now we still have it now you right click to get rid of it so now that we've got a bitmap out point, we also need to add the colorizer node, which allows you to select from a bunch of presets that will distribute the color over the terrain. Now to add this, you go to devices, converters, colorizers. So devices, converters, and the colorizer. And this needs to go down here in the filter section. So we're just going to place that down here and then right click to get rid of it because we don't need to put, add more than one. I believe you can add more than one, but we don't need this one for this tutorial. So finally, it's not apparently it's not really required, is the overlay node, the overlay view node. This helps you visualize the height and color maps together inside World Machine. This also found this is also found under devices output and then overlay. So devices and then outputs and then overlay view. Now 
according to the chart that I'm going off of in the tutorial on the CryEngine docs, it is down here outside of the output. So I'm just going to place that there and then right click to get rid of it. Now it says that you need to connect all of these guys together. I'm going to move Terrace over here for a little bit. Just move him right there. And I'm going to move the colorizer right here just so that we can kind of connect these two together. You need to put your mouse right over this little output for primary output for the height field. And you need to connect it to the colorizer. Just single clicks, left clicks will do. And you also need to connect the colorizer over here to the bitmap output. So put that right in there and you're done. That guy is now connected to there. Now this terrace also needs to be connected down here to the primary input of the height field. So you connect that guy there and then the colorizer will also need to be added. So you add the colorizer right here to the overlay input mixed. So now that the graphing is set up, you're all set to start working with the individual guys in here. So the first thing that we need to work on is the colorizer node. So you double click to open the colorizer presets. And right here, you just have standard black to white, you know, white to black. And there are so many there. I mean, and this is just the, the trial. I'm not sure. They've probably got tons more presets available. They've got classic mountains, desert, dirt and grass, dirty drainage, grassy jungle and mountains. I mean, they, they really have some pretty nice ones that you can work with. I think I'm going to stick with dirt and grass for right now because that one's a nice green to brown. And so... We just click and just select the one that you want and go with that. You don't really need to go with what I'm working with. It's up to you on how you create your map. This is creation for you. So just click OK and we're done with the colorizer. Now next we need to work out our bitmap output node, which is right here. So we're going to double click. And right now it says, so we have to open it up and we need to set the exported file type out as a BMP. Now it already puts it out as a BMP and click, we have to click out, output to disk. So right output to disk, the world must be built before you export your data, which I do so. Yes. File written successfully. Click OK and you're done. None of the other presets you really need to be messed with. So now you go to the overlay node, which is the last node. Which it doesn't create any files for the CryEngine to use, but it's help, very helpful in the world machine to visualize what you're creating. It overlays the color map onto your height map, if you set it up that way, to give you a preview of the terrain that you're creating. So, there isn't really anything that you really need to do with this guy. I mean, you can mess around with it if you want. I recommend getting to know all of the settings for what's going on in your map creation. But basically what this does is it it adds the height map and the color map together. We're going to open up a CryEngine sandbox. And I'm just not doing so hot today. I am really sorry about that. Okay, so we're just going to, I mean, as you can see, I, for a map 512 by 512 by one, well, 512 by one, that was what the tutorial that they have online, is, you know, says to create. So we're just going to create a new level, and I'm just going to call it map underscore 512 by 512. 512, I can't type. So levels, 512, 512, and 1. So terrain size, 512 by 512 meters, and that'll match the terrain that we just created in the world machine. Click OK. Now, as I discussed in the previous tutorial about set, about creating terrain, click make sure you just keep the defaults for all this. So. We have our terrain. Now, when you t create terrain, you have to make sure that your height map is what you want it to be. So terrain max height is set to the maximum that it can go. Set it to like 128. Now, uh, the reason why I say 128 is because the CryEngine manual, the developers say 128 is a good height. So we're going to set that to 128. Now, we're going to go to File, Import Height Map. Now, our output is right here, output out 16. Now, I believe before we do that, we have to come down here, export slash import terrain texture under the terrain tab. Click that, and you want to click on this square guy here, and change tile resolution to 512, 512. Now it's 512, and we're going to import our, we're going to go to your documents, and go down to world machine documents, and image.bimp. Click OK, and then 
close. So as you can see, now we have our color scheme for what we wanted for our dirt and grass. And now we have to import the terrain itself. So we're gonna go to terrain and we're going to hit modify file, import height map. And here is your output R16 file. Click OK and close this guy out and zoom out. Voila, you guys have yourselves some very, very realistic looking terrain inside our map. And why don't we just do this and control G and we're in the game. Now, as you can see, we haven't uh, applied any real textures, so there's nothing there. But, I mean, just, just look at this. I mean, this is just amazing what we're able to do. And as you can see, it's kind of difficult for me to be able to get up these mountain passes. I'm, you know, having to jump a lot. Get up there. Get, 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 get up there. Come on. And let's try to get up to the top of this mountain here. And once I'm done finagling around... I'm going to go over to the other one that I was messing around with because I had to learn how to utilize the machine. Get up there! Get up! Oh, there we go. Okay, so because I had to learn how to use the machine, the world machine, and get it to work. I mean, look at that. That is so realistic. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do that. Just would not be able to do that. And once you're in this mode, you can, and once you're in the game of the crying engine, you can modify all this. You can use the smooth. You can make everything more level and stuff like that. But look at how realistic these mountain ranges are. This is just incredible. And just the fact that we are utilizing the, the, to, the, the, t oh man, the trial version. I can't even talk. The trial version of World Machine. I just imagine what you could do with the actual paid version. So that's just what you can do with that. And let me switch back over. I'm not going to save this, but 512. Well, actually, I think it already saved. No, don't save it. So here's the other one that I made with the World Machine, the one that I was working with the other day, the other night, and I was just kind of messing around. And as you can see, we have ourselves. I added a grass texture, and I also added some rock to make it look a lot more realistic. I'm working on the snow and just trying to figure out what exactly I can do. Now up here with the snow I added snow caps and I added ice to make it look super realistic on these mountain tops here. So because on the tops you would definitely see more of snow and I just lagged out everything with all this. So as you can see we're just doing snow here. Now down here is ice and let me just shoot around for a little bit as you can see is breaking up like ice should and that's just the texture that we used so you can do a lot with this engine as you can see I'm I've made this into like a bay area here and this is just something that I was working on I'm not sure if I'll ever utilize anything in this this is just to try to get more familiar with utilizing textures and everything like that just on my own time and let me just show you what I was doing with the layer painter before I end this episode off. So, layer painter. So as you can see in this one, I've got grass, which is set to an altitude of 0 to 60. It doesn't appear anywhere else above 60 to 60 altitude, and it only and it goes from a slope from 0 to 90. Rock 60 to 1024 is the altitude, so grass stops at 60, rock starts at 60. And then snow starts at an altitude of 96 and goes to an altitude to the to the sky basically ice starts at 96 goes to 102 so and it only and it, it this is just it's just incredible i mean there is there will be some bugs every now and again and i haven't been able to figure out how to get rid of what i'm not sure if this is like a shadowing problem or something but you can easily clean this up i can I, i'm sure you can but that is basically all I wanted to show you guys in this tutorial was how to utilize the world machine and how to create realistic looking landscapes instead of just kind of plugging around with what we were doing. Now what we were doing was fine in what we and how we were creating our landscape. It was just it was perfectly fine in our in our first in the first videos that I in the first two videos that I made. There is nothing wrong with doing what you want to do and just utilizing the standard for what they bring for you. Let me switch back here. Close that. 
close that. Okay, there's nothing wrong with doing this, with doing the way that they show you in the tutorial on how to create terrain. Nothing wrong with this at all. But if you want something more realistic, you can definitely do that with the world machine. Now, before I end this episode off, I'm going to show you what I've been doing with the lighthouse here. And in the next episode, I will show you how to work with the vegetation tool. That's something that I just learned how to do the other night. And so I'm going to change our time of day back. Let me bring this over here. I found a really nice time of day, which is at 7 o'clock in the morning, for to make the everything look nice. So our lighthouse is perfectly nice and lit up. We've got some nice shadows being created. But if you come up here, this took a very long time, but I got it to work. These torches. And some at some angles, the torches don't look right, but at other angles, they look like they're perfect. And, you know, that's just, you know, how it was. And the, getting the fire animation to work was kind of difficult. And just kind of getting the light, lighting it up. I mean, yeah, sure, if you were to stand here, you totally would burn yourself, and that would be not not good but you know I think this give the having the torches and the light the lighting that's being generated by the torches inside our lighthouse is actually a very good feel and yeah I just uh, this is what I've been working on and I really hope that you enjoyed this episode just showing you how to utilize the world machine and my torches and all that so I hope you guys have yourselves a great day and I will see you in the next episode see you later